Uh, I always, um, I'm just very happy to see all of the witnesses, but I'm even happier uh, to be able uh, to welcome Mr. Barber of Arizona uh, as a new member of the uh, committee. And uh, it is important to note that he comes from a very important state, uh, the state of Arizona, and he's had a very important predecessor, uh, Ms. Uh, Giffords. And of course, uh, he uh, brings to this committee uh, a, a commitment and concern about securing the homeland. And I think it is extremely important to add to our Western presence. And Mr. Barber, you are welcomed. And thank you so very much for your service to this country. Yes, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Let me um, indicate, uh, I always uh, start by indicating uh, that on 9-11, uh, Transportation Security Administration and TSO officers were not in place and we lost thousands of lives. It is all right to ask and analyze uh, the uh, going forward of the Texas, excuse me, the Transportation Security Administration. Uh, but as I listen to our witnesses today, uh, many of you may have taken some mode of transportation, and many of you may have flown. Uh, our flight attendant flies often. And uh, all of the critiquing does not take away the value of the Transportation Security Administration and TSO officers. I'll be listening as I'm in and out on solutions. Uh, solutions is the key of what we must proceed on. Terrorists remain determined to attack our transportation system. We must match their determination with our vigilance. Our perspective on transportation security changed after September 11th. We established a 9-11 Commission and passed legislation which was based on the Commission's recommendation. I think we have done quite well. We have not had a terrorist act on our soil. Yes, there have been a number of threats, those that have not been made public. But with the combined uh, labor of TSO officers, uh, others on the front lines, intelligence, collaboration, we are not what we were pre-9-11. We must all remember that in the wake of 9-11, our first step was the creation of TSA and the replacement of contract guards with federal employees at this nation's airport checkpoints. I travel throughout this nation, and I stop and talk to TSO officers. They are former police persons, military persons, and they are public servants, and they are serving their nation. I will have great quarrel with any testimony that offers to suggest we need to change them out and that there is a status quo. What I will say is I'm always prepared to ensure a more efficient, effective, uh, experienced uh, group of public servants. And I welcome, in collaboration with the chairman, to do so. The American public needed to know that each passenger would be screened and each bag would be checked. We owed it to the 3,000 people who died that day to assure that this would not happen again. Mr. Chairman, I welcome our efforts, as I said, to continue to improve the system that secures our nation's skies. Today we will take a closer look at TSA's risk-based approach and the agency's efforts to effectively address threats in transportation security. There have been many changes, and they are looking forward to those changes. The threat to inbound passenger and cargo flights remains a reality. These threats can only be resolved if members of this body are not afraid to ask difficult questions or embrace complex answers, but not take a widespread view that we must throw out the Transportation Security Administration and the TSO officers. Our witnesses today will discuss various ideas for improving TSA's risk-based approach to securing our aviation sector. As the authorizing committee for TSA, it is certainly appropriate for us to hear and consider ideas from those who do not work for TSA. In particular, I look forward to hearing from Ms. Alonzo, a flight attendant who will provide her frontline perspective on how TSA can enhance its layered security. As we know, flight attendants do not serve uh, uh, flight attendants do not just serve beverages. They are often the first crew members to recognize and address safety and security problems. As most recent example of this just took place a week ago in China, crew members and passengers foiled the hijacking of the six people attempted to break into the cockpit door. Further, just this year, we have had a number of instances in which the decisive actions of flight personnel ensure the safety and security of passengers. In each of these instances, in-cabin security uh, was the last line of defense in thwarting potential terrorist acts. To further reiterate the threats we face in aviation, we must remember these incidents that frame our security discussions today. Uh, I'll just highlight uh, December 22nd, 
uh, Flight 63 American Airlines from Miami, uh, from, to Miami from Paris, self-proclaimed al-Qaeda operative attempted to detonate an explosive device. December 25th, UMA, uh, the Christmas Day bomber, also remembered as the Christmas Day bomber attempted to designate his underwear. And finally, on May 22nd, American Airlines 787 from Paris to Charlotte was diverted to Bangor after a passenger claimed to have an explosive device in their body. All these incidents took place on flights and bound to the United States. Ms. Alonzo was on that flight in May. I look forward to hearing her testimony concerning this incident. Her testimony will offer the kind of operational insight we need to examine what should be done when all other layers of security have been compromised. Yes, we need to expand TSA <coughs> to other modes of transportation. Yes, we need to be efficient, effective, uh, and even look closely at how we use the personnel at TSA. But I will be continuously committed to the structure that we put in place. Let's look for solutions and answers as we work to improve the security of this nation. I yield back. I